Hello and welcome everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn about how we can use InfluxDB with Tableau. Specifically, we're going to be talking about how we can leverage the Tableau JDCB driver to uh, get our data from InfluxDB v3 cloud serverless into Tableau and then make visualizations as well as a quick forecast. So let's get into it. Basically, I'm going to start in the InfluxDB UI and create a bucket so that we can write data to that bucket. And I'm just going to write CPU metrics, so I'm going to call it CPU. Uh, and then I'm going to use Telegraph to write CPU metrics from my local machine to InfluxDB v3 cloud serverless. I'm going to select the CPU bucket to write into there and search for the CPU input plugin. Um, there we go. Once I've found it, I'm going to select it and uh, I'm just going to use the default configuration options. I'm going to give it a configuration name, CPU again. And now I have the setup instructions for Telegraph. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste those instructions and commands into my terminal one by one. And once I run the uh, Telegraph with the right config, you can see that it was all loaded there and running. And I can verify that I'm in fact getting CPU metrics by going to the Data Explorer and selecting for some metrics, we'll select for, let's see, usage uh, user, usage system, and uh, go ahead and use that SQL sync to craft a SQL query for us and generate all of our uh, CPU data. But we can see that we can't uh, visualize multiple series simultaneously because the Data Explorer is really just for exploring your data. We can only look at like one, um, you know, one time series at a time, and this is why you'd want to use a different visualization tool like Tableau to actually make good uh, visualizations. So we're going to go to the Maven Central repository and find the SQL JDCP driver. We're going to click it and download it. And once we've downloaded it, we want to make sure that we have, in fact, downloaded it. And the next step is to move it into the appropriate location, um, into library slash Tableau slash drivers so that Tableau can go ahead and leverage and use that. Um, and so yeah, so we just have to go ahead and move that. I was just verifying that is in fact in downloads and moving it there. And now once we've done that, we're ready to actually connect our JDCB driver to it. This is the URL that you're going to want to use. You're going to want to replace the URL with your host URL itself. So I'm doing that there. And then of course, at the end, your database with your actual database name, which is CPU. So that's just what I'm doing here. I'm taking out uh, the, the default URL from the documentation and copying pasting that. And then at the end, uh, I have my uh, database name, which is uh, CPU. We're gonna select that Postgres SQL dialect as well. And last but not least, we're gonna need an authentication token to connect uh, to InfluxDB. Um, I'm just creating a quick one here and scoping it to my CPU bucket uh, because that's good standard security practice there. In fact, we could have scoped it even be more restrictive and really just made a read token since that's all we're going to be doing with Tableau. Um, and we use that as the password and we submit and now we're connected. So we can select for a stream um, and we're going to select the schema IOX because that's the underpinning engine for InfluxDB v3 and then take our CPU table, which is available to us, and drag it in. It just takes a second. Once that's been dragged in, we can look through all the fields that are a part of our table and verify that that's actually what we want and go ahead and upload that data to Tableau. And then we'll be able to just go over to a worksheet once we have verified that the data is as we expected and what we want to look at. So I'm going to just go to the worksheet and now you can see that we can put different fields in the columns and rows sections, even create filters uh, so that we can just visualize specific um, metrics. So for example here, I'm going to just look at the usage system again um, with that filter and we can see that we have all of our usage system data for every CPU. Um, and so that's a great way to create, you know, uh, a very simple visualization. We can even select the time series visualization type and look at all of our CPU metrics. We can also aggregate our data. Um, naturally, when you just pull in that field into the row column, it'll apply a sum, um, but we could also change that into an attribute, which is just the raw data itself for each particular um, CPU. Uh, and then we can also you know, apply other measures to it, like sums or averages. Um, going back and forth, uh, those are just all options for us as well. 
Um, and then again, we can go back to the attribute if we wanted to. If we go and click the analysis tab and click aggregate measures, then we can actually see all of the raw usage system data for every CPU. I also wanted to show a different data set, which is the air sensors sample data set here. It just has uh, temperature, humidity, and carbon monoxide values for a variety of sensors. And right now I'm just looking at the temperature sensor, temperature data for a particular sensor, and I wanted to visualize that within the Tableau. So I do the same thing, but I didn't change my database name to um, the air sensors database because that's where I've written my air sensors data to. And just like before, I'm going to need a specific token for um, that database. So I'm going to go ahead and create one. You can also, you know, uh, create an all access if you wanted to. Um, it's up to you and what your, you know, security requirements are. Um, and I'm going to go use that as my password. Again, that dialect is PostgreSQL, SQL, so that's basically how we connect here. I'm just verifying that everything looks right and that I have the right URL, and I, in fact, I do. And so I can go ahead and start connecting. And once I do that, I can go ahead and select that public database again. And I can go ahead and select for my schema, which is going to just be IOX one more time. And I can drag the table that I want, which is my air sensors table. This is actually the data that we'll perform the forecast on. So again, we can verify that the data is like as we expected. We have all this uh, carbon monoxide humidity and temperature data for a variety of sensors. It's looking all good. And then I've gone to a worksheet. I'm going to go ahead and drag in the temperature. We'll do a sum here. And we'll add it as a filter as well. Um, sorry, we'll add the, the air sensors as a filter, I believe. There you go, the sensor ID as a filter. Uh, and we'll select for TML100, which is just the same uh, sensor ID I looked for before. Now this visualization isn't very good, and that's mainly because the index here is not well suited to visualize very well. So we're going to go ahead and change that. We'll also change it to an attribute to just be the raw time series data. Then we'll right click on that uh, index, and we'll go ahead and select the range that we want for our Y values. And we'll do between um, you know, 69 and 73, because those are our temperature values here. And now we can see everything. And if we go to an the Analytics tab, um, we can go ahead and actually make a forecast. But first, we're going to need to apply that to uh, kind of a materialized view of our data. So we'll use the date trunk function um, to basically create little windows of data with our time as our, what we're going to be applying there. Um, and then we will add a measure to it. Well, let's do an average. OK, so we have our average over uh, minutes. And then we can just apply that forecasting model to it. And it automatically generates a nice forecast for us. We can go ahead and name our sheet as well. So if we want to include this sheet in a dashboard, we have a nice name for this graph and forecast. And the great thing about Tableau Forecast 2 is that it um, actually does an analysis of a variety of different statistical forecasting methods and, and does a, you know um, an error analysis and selects the one that is the best. Um, so that's pretty handy for you as well when you're just not even having to worry about anything. And so now we can go ahead and actually um, add our trend lines as well so we can see the general trend lines of the forecast as well as our actual data. Um, and then we can add this particular sheet to our dashboard. So if we go to our first dashboard, for example, we can just drag and drop the results from that sheet into our dashboard. And there we go. We have one cell in our dashboard complete with a forecast. So I hope that this tutorial so far has proven useful for you to get started using Tableau with InfluxDB Cloud 3 um, serverless or dedicated. Uh, and this would be for Tableau desktop as well. So thank you so much.